Hello everybody, welcome to the first episode of the Marco Book Club. Um, I'm super excited about this. I've never done a book club, uh, but I've got tons of books to recommend and it's really, really difficult to, to know where to start. So I'm going to start with the book that I have recommended the most uh, of any book I've read. Um, this is the one that I've sent to friends, I've bought in person, I can't seem to keep a physical copy in my house because I'm always giving it out when I'm kind of drunk at a party. I'm like, just take it, go, read it. So uh, we're gonna start with The Razor's Edge by W. Somerset Mom. This book was actually recommended to me by someone who I really respect, Antoinette Mongelli. She was my boss when I was uh, at UCLA. I worked for the Chancellor's Office at UCLA. And I was a senior and I was trying to decide what to do with my life and Antoinette was sort of a mentor to me. She was the assistant chancellor at that time of UCLA. I could have taken many paths in 2008. Uh, the most practical for someone who'd studied politics like I had would probably have been to go to law school and, and at that time I probably could have gotten a recommendation, a letter of recommendation to go to UCLA Law School or a number of other good schools um, by having worked with the chancellor's office. Um, but instead I had gone to India um, I worked in microfinance after college, um, trying to use my degree to create some sort of good, some alleviation of poverty in the developing world. Um, and I came back to UCLA uh, to meet with Antoinette and asked her uh, for some advice. I, I told her, I said, I'm not sure what I want to do with my life. I don't think the traditional path of law school or finance um, or anything like that is, is for me. I don't know what to do. And so Antoinette bought me uh, five books. And a lot of them, you'll probably see most of them in this uh, book club because at that time, being 22 years old, not knowing what to do with my life, um, she basically helped me figure it out by giving me books. Um, and of those books, the one that stuck with me the most was this one, The Razor's Edge. So um, let's get into it. I'll tell you a bit about this book. Uh, I'll tell you, this will be a spoiler free uh, review. I won't tell you what happens. I'm trying to figure out a way to uh, make this a bit more formal. Maybe doing a podcast version eventually where I tell you the full uh, story. I've seen that Hannah Witten at the Bangin' Book Club, they do something like that. Or maybe I'll just pause at the end of the video and then do the spoiler uh, after that. Uh, or maybe I'll give the spoiler alert version two weeks into the book club. I don't know. Point being, there's a link down below where you can buy this book. Uh, on Amazon, uh, there'll be an affiliate link there, which is kind of a, a way of you supporting this channel um, without costing yourself any more money. It would essentially give me a finder's fee to buy the book, uh, basically, through Amazon. Of course, I support local bookshops, so if you want to do that, that's cool. And there's a free version of this book on Gutenberg.org, which is where you can get a lot of classics uh, for free, like digital downloads. Okay, so you got three ways to get the book in person, through the affiliate link on Amazon, or for free at Gutenberg. Okay, so how to begin. The author, Somerset Mom, W. Somerset Mom, is a really interesting character. He worked in the intelligence services during the First World War, and he was a prolific author. This is one of his last books uh, from 1944, I think it was published. And it, it, it's really interesting in the way that it's told because it's, it's told from the perspective of the author. He actually is playing himself, and he says nothing more than um, that he has met this character who's super interesting and he doesn't know if this character is going to amount to anything in the big scheme of things. But he's so unique that he has to tell his story. He actually starts the book saying, I've never begun a novel with more misgiving. And I would say the same thing about, I've never begun a book club with more misgiving. Sometimes I don't know if people are going to get this book because, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't move fast. It's not a page turner, but it's really, really deep. It is a book about essentially the meaning of life, the searching for purpose in life. And it centers around the story of this guy named Larry. Larry is a young man when the author meets him in 1919. Larry has just come back from World War I where he volunteered as a pilot. 1919, this is before the Great Depression. This is when America's confidence in itself was at its peak. It was the new Europe. It was, uh, you know, it had won World War I and it was, uh, there was just so much potential for, for development, uh, for becoming rich. The story begins in Chicago and the author, uh, Somerset mom is visiting some friends there from a wealthy family, one of the first families of Chicago. And Larry is dating this family's daughter, Isabel. Isabel 
is basically guaranteed to be wealthy through her family, and Larry is her boyfriend. Um, but when he came back from World War I, some of his innocence was lost. Something happened, and we never really know what happened during World War I, but there was essentially the death of a friend that caused him to think that life was meaningless, at least the life that he was living was meaningless. And so, uh, while Emily's family is essentially telling him, you know, we will help you become uh, rich and successful, uh, but something's not right. You know, he says that life is meaningless ever since World War I, and he's a happy guy, he's not depressed, but the author sees him diving into books. And I think that's one thing that, that really struck me right off the bat was the main character's love for knowledge and his thirst for, for finding meaning in life. And so this is a trait that sticks with Larry and becomes more pronounced over the coming years because the book skips years and even decades at a time. It's all about the author meeting this set of characters that he originally met in Chicago over the span of, of many decades, all the way through the uh, Great Depression and it's all about tracing Larry's path uh, with the more traditional paths um, over these extremely uh, tumultuous times. Um, the story really begins when Larry tells Isabel, his girlfriend, you know, I, I thank you for offering me this job uh, with your family friend, uh, but I don't, wanna, I don't wanna make money. I don't wanna do that. I want to go to Paris. And she goes, what do you wanna do in Paris? He goes, I want to loaf, loaf, you know, as in do nothing, you know, and so, uh, so Isabel's family is saying, well, Isabel, we know you love this guy Larry, but he looks like a loser. He looks like a bum. He wants to go to Paris and he just wants to loaf. Why would you want to be with someone like that? But they say, okay, you know what? Go. Uh, she says, Larry, do what you gotta do. Take two years. And in two years time, if you still, if you're done with, with your little time loafing in Paris, come back to Chicago and we'll get married. So uh, the pivotal scene is two years later, Isabel goes to Paris, she meets with Larry, and she's trying to talk to him to figure out if uh, they're going to get married. What's the deal? And so when Isabel comes to visit him in Paris, she finds that he speaks fluent French. He actually speaks Greek, too, and he's reading the Odyssey in the original language. And he, uh, she says, come back to Chicago. He goes, I couldn't go back now. I'm on the threshold. I see vast lands of the spirit stretching out before me, beckoning, and I'm eager to travel them. I thought that was amazing. And she goes, well, what do you expect to find in them? The answers to my questions. I want to make up my mind whether God is or God is not. I want to find out why evil exists. I want to know whether I have an immortal soul or whether when I die, it's the end. And then she, she continues, she asks, well, Larry, people have been asking those questions for thousands of years. If they could be answered, surely they would have been answered by now. I will leave you at this scene. Um, I will just say that Larry travels very far, very wide. Uh, he has the journey of the spirit that he's looking for. Meanwhile, Isabel takes a different path. And the story ultimately is a story about success. What does success mean? And do these characters find what they're looking for? Larry's quest is essentially to answer those questions, the immortal questions of the meaning of life. I related to that and I also related to the idea that people do need to ask these questions. Sometimes when you think really deeply, people are always like, well, why are, you, why are you talking about that? Can't you just lighten up? Why don't you just talk about baseball or whatever? You know, and, and that's a fair enough approach to life, but there are certain people that, that are curious about these things and will always ask these sort of questions and will always try to live lives uh, to try to find out the answers. And so that's what this book is about. Uh, I will leave you here. I don't really know the best way to do this, so if you have any ideas on how to improve the book club or what you would like to get out of it, please leave them in the comment box uh, below. In the meantime, I will post the first discussion on the Goodreads book club uh, group, so if you haven't joined that already, please make sure that you do. So I'll try to do this once a month. Uh, I think that's a pretty good pace, although I love to devour books myself and I don't want to do it like every week, but I know you guys it's just too much, too much reading. All right, next month's book will be Hell's Angels by the great Dr. Hunter S. Thompson. So if you want to go ahead and get started on Hell's Angels, uh, you're more than welcome to. All right, guys, well, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe, and if you, if you tweet this out, if you share it on social media, use the hashtag Marco Book Club. Um, someone started that up. I love it. Let's do it. Uh, turn on notifications so that you know every time I publish a video, and make sure that you participate in the Goodreads uh, commentary as well. All right, in the meantime, just uh, good luck reading, and uh, reach out if you have any other questions. There is a Gmail address, 
marcobookclub at gmail.com if you have any questions, comments, concerns, etc. And uh, I'll, I'll be in touch. All right, take it easy. See ya.